God cross to take my mans out, just kill yourself in the trenches. 40 on my help, I had to fix my belt. What's good, you two? You know what I'm saying? It's Kadi Shwood, Jermaine Jada. We back with another video, y'all. You know I'm saying today, y'all, bro. We got, we got what they won't tell you in the Bulls documentary. So I'm get basically the last dance one or whatever. Mm -hmm. I, ain't, I only watched some of the last dance, bro. I ain't I watched, watched the whole it. thing, bro. This is, I watched. Was it good? Mm -hmm. I think it was good. I gotta finish the rest, bro. I ain't gonna lie, bro. But shoot, y'all. We gonna see what this is on time. This is a requested video, too, by the way. So, we finna see what this is on time. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe if you're new. Subscribe to F with twins, bro. Damn. Man, share the video and push that post notification bell. I ain't gonna lie, Jim, This Jimmy High Roller dude. Y'all saying, uh, probably to react to this channel more because he got some he got some stuff on here. I ain't gonna lie. On here. Have a crazy thumbnails. <laughs> like a lot. For real. But shit, we finna, let's see what I'm talking about, bro. And y'all rate the uh, documentary down down below 1%. Okay. The inbounds pass comes into Jordan. Here's Michael at the foul line. A shot on Elo. Good! The Bulls win it! They win it! Set the Cleveland Cavaliers. Michael Jordan hits it at the bitch. foul line. One to 100. Iconic. Jordan's game-winning shot over Greg Elo to win a first-round matchup in the 1989 playoffs. A shot burned into all of our memories as one of MJ's early defining moments. But what some may not know is that Michael Jordan scored 40 points in this thriller. Oh, wait. Did I say score 40 points? I meant to say averaged 40 points in this Whoa! Nigga, that's a whole every game. Thirty, that mean thirty holes, thirty holes, forty holes, fifty holes, forty holes. Damn. So he racked. He was going <laughs> stupid. Nigga, what? He was a nightmare. Nigga. What? He kept increasing his points. Oh God, though, what the hell is wrong with that nigga? Bruh, hold on real quick, bruh. Whoa, bruh. What? At this point, bro. Get YouTube premium. Wait, say get to get YouTube. Oh, I think we straight. I were freak, bro. Right, man. <laughs> we just started, <laughs> For five straight games, MJ averaged 40 Wait, points. Wait, what, what was his stats? Series. Oh, not his stats, For man. five straight games. Six, six, one. I'm 98. So he like two inches taller than me and the same weight, bro. I could be doing this right now. MJ averaged 40 points for an entire playoff series. But mm -hmm. then again, dominance of this caliber was nothing new to Jordan because in the season prior, he averaged over 45 points a game against the same Cavs team in the first round of the playoffs. In fact, Jordan averaged over 40 points per game for an entire playoff series on six separate occasions. Oh my freaking gosh! This Jesus nigga's him! Christ. Wait, say 19? No, no. This is crazy, bruh. Average is 30 plus. Bruh. For look like at this series. 50, 55, 38, 40, 39. So crazy. 49, my nigga. 63, 19. What is he doing? Like, what the fuck? 60? Yes, bruh. Bruh. But when you consider the fact that Mike averaged over 37 points per game in the playoffs for a five-year stretch, this feat becomes a little easier to wrap your mind around. And with the Last Dance documentary now airing, what better time to discuss 23 facts about Michael Jordan that no one ever told you? Now, these aren't your typical MJ facts. If you're familiar with my fact videos from the past, you know that I make it my mission to go out of my way to dig up some of the most fascinating, insightful, and oftentimes obscure facts I can find. This video shall be no different. Take the 1993 finals. Let's just ignore the fact that Jordan torched the Suns for 40 a game in the series because the Suns weren't the only ones getting torched. In game two of this series, if you pay close attention, you will notice that MJ is noticeably darker in this game than he usually is. Well, that's because the day before this game, Jordan went out and played two rounds of golf in the blistering Phoenix Sun. Needless to say, I don't think playing eight hours of golf in between game days affected his play, since he proceeded to drop 55 points in the following game. Jordan fans know that while at UNC, Michael was teammates with the great James Worthy. 
But what some may not know is that in his last season at North Carolina, over half of his fellow Tar Heel teammates would go on to be NBA players. In his rookie season, Michael Jordan scored 2,313 points, by oh far the most points scored by any rookie in modern NBA history. For rookie? Comparison, here is Jordan's rookie season. Excuse me? I thought he meant in the first. That's two what I'm years. saying. What do you mean, rookie? I thought he meant the first. Nigga, two 1984, bro. Two thousand, nigga. All these niggas been. Wait. Blake Griffin, Ron Harper, Shaq. Ai. Hey, I thought he meant in the first two years. But like, no, I'm not. What I'm not understanding is. 2,083 games. That's crazy, man. That means he's getting bucks. Rookie. Bro, that's crazy. That's like 2K. Can y'all say we overreacting, like, for real? <laughs> bro, that kid, bro. Hell not, bro. He ain't got rookie of the year on guy he did. He, he had he did. No, no way. he If, if he did it, <laughs> fight whoever the commissioner is. Oh, God. Fight Compared them. Jump the them. Raise their house. In modern NBA. History. And here's Jordan's numbers compared to rookies from this season. There are about a dozen NBA players Deal. on record to shatter a backboard. Michael Jordan is the smallest and lightest. In a 1985 exhibition, see, this game, 21-year-old Jordan viscerated a backboard, leaving the scene completely unscathed. While bro, that shit is still crazy. That nigga is, bro, he don't fucking be bringing down backboards like that, nigga. Exactly, That's what some sinners are supposed to do and shit. When he you... was literally my size when this shit happened, bro. <laughs> Skinny and tall, bro. He probably he was, was even like... less than that when he was when we just seen him. Oh, God, bro. man. Right here, because he probably built on weight, bro. Three shards of glass. And if that wasn't impressive enough... If this guy was about one more foot to the right, Jordan would have most definitely jumped over him as well. He said okay. that. Would have made this undoubtedly the most legendary dunk of all time. Talk about a big what if. In Michael Jordan's prolific career, he played exactly 1,212 NBA players. Of those 1,212, 310 of them never won a single game against Michael Jordan. 310. That means a quarter of the players who played against Michael in their NBA career never beat him. Not even I once. What? And of all the players Jordan faced in his career, the majority of them beat Jordan less than three times. For yeah, comparison, of the 1,212 opponents Mike faced, only 74 of them never lost to Mike. Some of these players include Dirk Nowitzki, Gilbert Arenas, and I'll be damned, Scotty Pippen. But nearly all the players who went undefeated against Mike did so while he played with the Wizards. On the other hand, Sherman Douglas, a 12-year NBA vet, faced off against MJ 30 times in his career and lost every single oh time. Damn. 30 games, 30 L's. On the other hand, Isaiah Thomas maintains a pretty unique position in NBA history. Of all the players Jordan faced in his career, Zeke has beaten Jordan more than any other player. Of the 65 games Isaiah went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Michael, Isaiah won 36. Now, we all know that MJ was a game-changer the moment he stepped into the league. But Michael was so good that after breaking his foot just three games into his second NBA season, Jordan still made the All-Star team. He Stop lying to me, bruh. Did you, did, what, 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 what was you capping and said some shit like he said he won the award without playing because he was injured that, that season <laughs> on some capping shit. Michael Jordan, he did the made the All Star right. game without playing. He had a broken foot the first three games, so he nigga, so he ain't played. He only played three games. Bro, How much did he score in the three games? He better say, bro. What was his stats? Like, what the fuck? How does he get in the All-Star game, man? He's not going to be able to play. Exactly, bro. He's just choosing, nigga. He's a second-year player who only played three games before the All-Star break, and he still made the... Where's his stats at? What the fuck? Oh, my God. What the fuck? Wait a minute. 33 and 12. How many... How many assists? 
My nigga, what? Three blocks. Bruh, only three games? He was going, he was getting busy. They won those three games and then lost all these after. My fuck, bro. Bro, what, my nigga? Star team. Of course, MJ was hurt, so he was unable to play in the game at All-Star Weekend. Over the last half decade, the NBA has turned into one big three-point contest. For some players, the influx in threes has been a blessing to the their curry, team. bruh. For others, not so much. Here's the charts of the top 10 scores of the 2018-2019 NBA season. The red areas are two-point shot attempts, and the gray areas are three-point shot attempts. You have Giannis, who prefers to take it inside. Kawhi Leonard, the mid-range sniper. Stephen Curry, who attempted more threes than twos last season. And of course, you have James Harden, who attempted over 1,000 three-pointers in a single season. And then, there's Michael Jordan who in the 1987 NBA season averaged over 37 points per game and no only points. shot 66 three-pointers the entire regular season. See, this is exactly why I go straight mid-range, bro. It was crazy. I'm now I'm thinking about it. I had a dream about it. <laughs> I, just had a, I just woke up from a nap, and I had a dream. I was talking to somebody about why I don't shoot threes and why I do mid-range only, bro. That shit's that shit's weird. It's <laughs> no, that's not that like, This is crazy though, cause my nigga, this nigga. So most of his points was in the paint or late ranges, nigga, and he still got that much. Got Again, that much points. Which though. means that season, only two percent of his shots came from beyond the arc. MJ did not need a three ball to drop forty on a man's head. In the summer of 1995, during the filming of Space Jam, Warner Brothers assembled an entire basketball gym fit with a weight room so Michael Jordan could practice during filming. During these practice sessions, Michael would invite fellow NBA players out to get some runs in. Some players, including Kenny Smith, Charles Barkley, Reggie Miller, Magic Johnson, and Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman it wasn't until hard. the following season that players said they wished they had never shown up for these runs since they felt that they had only made MJ even better. Of course, that season, Jordan would go on to lead the league in scoring, win league MVP, lead the Bulls to the most wins in a regular season, won a title, and won finals MVP. Damn. Thanks, Reggie. <laughs> Damn, my nigga. That nigga, what the? Bro, he's, like, he basically did a whole my career run, basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bro, what? He, he went, went and invited everybody. Did he won an MVP, too? Yeah. What the fuck, fuck my nigga? Yeah. Wait, it's a... He got the MVP the same time. Movie about a dog? What the fuck, man? This shit is crazy, bro. They get every day as him, though, bro. Like, what the fuck? Like. Now, box plus minus is an interesting stat. At face value, it doesn't seem to be very accurate or insightful. But all things considered, with a big enough sample size, it is actually a great indicator of a player's value. And let's just say Michael Jordan was very valuable, since he holds the NBA record for highest box plus minus for a career. And this includes his years with the Wizards. But the greatness does not end there. MJ also has six of the top 10 value over replacement seasons. He has the highest career PER in NBA history, the highest career Damn. points per game in league history, the highest career win shares per 48. In fact, when playing with the Bulls, Jordan led the league in most advanced statistical categories more often than not, which really is just another piece of evidence for Jordan's greatness. But one of the only knocks against MJ's game was his subpar three-point shooting. Now, he wasn't bad at shooting the long ball, but by his standards, it might have been the weakest part of his game. And yet, in 1996, Michael Jordan finished the regular season shooting 43% from downtown on 260 attempts. That is better than any single season from Reggie Miller, Kevin Durant, LeBron James, Damian Lillard, James Harden, Kobe Bryant, Allen Iverson, Russell Westbrook, mm. and Dwayne Wade. At the conclusion of his senior season... Where's Curry? High school, Michael Jordan out. scored 30 points in the McDonald's All-American game. A new scoring record for the event and one that would stand for... Wait, go back? Mm -hmm. Nigga, what the hell? Mm -hmm. He's such a fucking tryhard, bro. Nigga. 
Yeah, he was getting busy. Man. He was getting but he was doing that shit for the hoes, bro. You know he was, bro. And say it's a McDonald's All American game. I'm like, come on, bro. Shit, rap. American game. A new scoring record for the event and one that would stand for 18 years. Yet, Jordan didn't so long, even win MVP no. of the game. Adrian Branch from the East and Aubrey Sherrod from the West both won co-MVP with 24 points and co -MVP? points respectively. And before we continue, Ooh. let's learn about one of the rarest feats in NBA history. Leading a team to a championship while leading the league in scoring. When you exclude Michael Jordan, here is the entire list of every player to ever accomplish this feat. Whoa, bro. That's the copyright music right there. I know he got copyrighted for that shit. 1947. I don't know who that nigga is. Damn. Damn. Where everybody at? Kill him. Bro, where was Michael Jordan at? Where the fuck? Wait, no, because he was saying the players who led the league in scoring won the championship in the same season. Didn't Michael Jordan do that? I could have sworn he did. I guess, I guess you're not including that name. Did you get that? Not a lot of players. Excluding Jordan, only four players in history have ever led the league in scoring and won a championship Damn, in the same season. People. Now I'm going to show you what this list looks like when you include Michael Jordan. Damn! Michael Jordan has led the league in scoring and won a title in the same season more than every single player in the history of the NBA. He's taking up damn near like a whole entire... Nigga, what? A whole entire row? <laughs> what? Try hard ass nigga. He's a try hard. He's a try hard. Who the fuck is this though? I don't know who this. Like, 1947. Damn. 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 Now Michael so Jordan was raised is, in Tommy. North Carolina, Shit. but was actually born in Brooklyn, New York, possibly one of the greatest birthplaces for NBA players. Of all the NBA players born in Brooklyn, 10 have been inducted into the Hall of Fame, 19 became All-Stars, totaling a staggering 26 league championships won. In fact, you could make a formidable team with just Brooklyn-born players. But once Michael's family moved to North Carolina, the rest is history. Like at Laney High School, where Michael Jordan did his best Oscar Robertson impersonation when he averaged a 29-point triple-double as a senior in high school. And I what? guess you could say MJ was pretty good at getting the bucket in the NBA too. Since in his 13 seasons with the Bulls, Michael Jordan won nearly as many scoring titles as every single active NBA player combined. That's Think crazy, about that. Bro. All active NBA players have a combined 11 scoring titles. Jordan amassed 10 in 13 seasons by himself. Most fans are aware That's that Michael wild, Jordan man. was a huge supporter and friend of Kobe Bryant. But what some people don't know is that Jordan was also a huge fan of Allen Iverson. Jordan said that he watched Allen Iverson's documentary three times and that it even made him cry, saying, yeah. quote, I love that little guy. And speaking of guys that Jordan has an appreciation for, one of the unsung heroes throughout Michael's career was his trainer, Tim Grover. Tim was so obsessed with making sure that Mike was in peak physical condition that he would go back and watch each and every one of Mike's games and count how many steps he took while on the court and which direction his steps were taken to ensure that he knew where Mike would be sore, how Damn. his body felt, and what regiments to complete in the following day. Bro, I, I need that, that oh nigga. Oh God, God. where the fuck is this nigga at? He probably cut. He probably charged like a hundred bands or some shit. Oh God. Oh God, nigga. Fuck, so he already calculating steps. Oh God, nigga. What? In a two-hour game, you got a magnifying glass. That nigga is looking so. One, two, three, <laughs> got four, tallies, five. Got tallies, tallies and shit. Five to the left, forty-five degrees. But how's he gonna know he's gonna be sore though, bro? Like what? You heard him. He heard. He count every step in which oh, direction. That's crazy, my nigga. <laughs> that's crazy. Forty-five bro. to the left, twenty-five <laughs> to the south, 
Bro, I would be straight back if my coach know all that shit, bro. Oh, me? My trainer know all, all that shit. Is, all I do is who? Everyone's <laughs> body from potential ah. career ending falls like this. The footage used in the Last Dance documentary was sitting around unused and unseen for years because Michael Jordan refused to give permission to release the tapes. That is, until the Cleveland Cavaliers won the 2016 NBA championship. On June 22nd, 2016, the exact day of the Cavs championship parade, Michael Jordan finally agreed to do the documentary. Coincidence? Wait. I think not. No. Oh, wait, what? The top. LeBron, LeBron said that's one of his greatest championships, so he was like, all right, go ahead and drop the documentary. <laughs> drop the shit right now. No, 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 right now. What you talking about? <laughs> of the Last Dance documentary, on Michael Jordan's basketball reference page, you can find a Last Dance viewer's guide, an all-inclusive summary of the Bulls' final title run. This includes every game, every play, and even every shot from the Bulls' historic 1997-1998 championship season. This is an incredibly insightful page that you can reference while watching the Last Dance documentary. Damn. So whether you're a stat nerd or just interested in some of the more finer details behind the story, I highly suggest you check out... I ain't gonna lie, bro. That's... I don't, I don't care about that. I ain't knowing all that. <laughs> I ain't that's that a lot of reason on that. Yeah, yeah, it's trying to prove a point. I got it. Into the Last Dance documentary Sundays on ESPN and ESPN2. Go even further down the deep, illustrious, and strikingly oh, entertaining rabbit hole that is Michael Jordan's career. No, this is not a paid advertisement for the documentary. It's just really, really good. <laughs> I mean, shoot. If y'all want to throw me some of that ESPN money, I wouldn't be opposed to it. But, uh... Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Hope you all enjoyed. That was a W video. I ain't gonna lie. Okay. Yeah, we gotta start watching more of these videos. No cap. Yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all. Let us know in the comments. Y'all wanna uh, keep seeing more videos from Jimmy High Roller, bro. He has some good videos, bro. No cap. Sure, bro. We have to watch. Some, we have to watch a lot more, bro. Oh God, cause this is interesting as <laughs> fuck. Like, nigga, oh what? God, he got whole movies and shit. <laughs> oh God. But shoot, y'all. That's the end of the video, you know what I'm saying? Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe if you're new. Subscribe to FLS20. Comment on some videos and see if you react to, bruh. Mm -hmm. Share the video, bruh. And push that post on your video. No cap. We out. Belly chucks with semi-suck. La hot, don't turn the city off. Be wild and don't get any fucks. We block stars. They.